Okay, good morning everybody. My name's Simon Martindor. I'm the marketing manager here at uh, 360 Solutions. Um, thanks very much for the investment in your time this morning. Um, we should be together for around 45 minutes or so. The presentation will be split between myself and, uh, and my colleague Dan, a security, um, security expert. And um, how we're going to split the presentation, I'm going to deliver the first part of the presentation. I'll give you the background as to why SD-WAN has been an emerging technology, what Cisco Meraki is and how it can address some of the challenges presented by traditional networking. And then I'll hand over to Dan, who's going to give you a full um, demonstration of Meraki and how it operates and how it can, how it can deliver on that promise. What are we going to cover? So we'll do um, a very basic overview of what is Meraki. There'll be some of you on the call today who may be already familiar with um, Meraki, more probably for Wi-Fi. You may already have be using Meraki for, to deliver your Wi-Fi internally within your organization. For some of you, it'll be completely new. So we'll do it very quickly. We'll, we'll cover the basics. Um, and then we'll move into where we're going to focus today, which is away from the traditional Wi-Fi piece, although Dan will touch on it briefly into more the um, the routing of internet traffic if you like and I'll talk through some of the challenges that present itself with traditional wide area networking for any of you on the call who operate with an MPLS or a wide area network today and why this buzzword has emerged software defined WAN will cover what it is and how um, Cisco Meraki can deliver on that on that subject matter if you like before I hand over to Dan and he'll do a an overview of how you would configure and deploy Cisco Meraki to deliver software-defined WAN as well as some of the broader uses um, around troubleshooting network issues and network infrastructure etc. Okay so first of all the basics as I said for those of you who aren't who aren't familiar so Cisco Meraki so some of you may already be familiar with it you may already be using it for wireless and you have access points in your premises delivering corporate or guest Wi-Fi access to, to visitors in one or multiple premises effectively what Meraki does is it consolidates multiple elements of your network stack into a single product family if you like across one or multiple sites um, across wireless um, security including traditional um, routing but also um, firewall firewalling and security, um, switching and even security cameras. What's unique or the whole value of Meraki is that all these appliances are managed, configured and controlled um, from a single centralized cloud-based dashboard. So for anybody on the call who is responsible for equipment across multiple locations or who is looking to simplify the management of their appliances, maybe currently they're sourced from multiple vendors and providing adequate support and cover to your user base in what is often a, a small IT team is, is difficult. Meraki is a great way of providing some simple centralized access to all appliances across multiple locations and managing them. As Dan will show later, given the quali quality of information that's available through the dashboard, um, you may even be able to replace third party network monitoring tools. Um, some of you may use products like SolarWinds or um, uh, or AppNetter to monitor traffic across your network as you'll be able to drill de right down to client and application level information through the dashboard even at remote sites which are great for anybody in IT who needs to troubleshoot issues quickly and, and, and effectively. Okay so on to what we're, what we're going to focus on for the main part of this um, presentation which is um, corporate networks or MPLS networks, WAN or MPLS as, as, as you may know them. So across Across wide area networks and MPLS, there are a series of challenges that uh, our customer base have come to us over a period of time that are commonplace that they, that they need addressing. Firstly, there's mobility. So more and more people expect um, to work at home and IT are under pressure to, to provide a secure and reliable solution to let those users connect back and allow them to function um, normally in business as usual operation. Um, next, as, as more CRM applications, etc., are consumed from the cloud, IT need to provide a secure and stable means of, of accessing those applications. Um, next, for many IT departments that we work with, budgets are being squeezed. Um, for, those of, for those companies that use private MPLS connections, you'll be tied, you'll find yourselves tied to them um, as your provider of bandwidth. What that means is, should you need to onboard a new site internally to your MPLS network, you're forced to consume the, the, the bandwidth from your MPLS provider. 
that means you're not in the best possible neg- no, place to negotiate on cost and get the best possible deal for your organisation. And what's more, it can also mean that as new sites are onboarded, you have no single start and end date for your MPLS contract and therefore exiting the arrangement becomes particularly difficult. Next is um, the simplification of the network management and we'll talk about that in a bit more detail as we go through the presentation. But for example, issuing and and managing VPNs across multiple locations can be complicated. Developing and issuing QAS policies, quality of service policies that allow you to prioritize um, key applications such as voice or video can be difficult and then and then lastly as as more and more of these applications move to the cloud everybody and it's commonplace is consuming more bandwidth as that bandwidth consumption goes up it's obviously critical that costs are managed to, to prevent costs going up in line with the bandwidth increase and the best possible way to do that is to use or to broker internet connections and make sure that you get the best possible rate for the bandwidth that you consume Okay, so the, the traditional network or wide area network, um, for, many, for many of you, you'll probably have a head office with one or more branch locations. Um, you may consume applications currently that are hosted in a data center um, within the MPLS, so it's the, that's natively included within the MPLS. Um, and then internet traffic may break out centrally from the MPLS providers, uh, from the MPLS provider and um, routed out over a centrally managed firewall, which is commonplace, managed, co-managed between yourselves and the MPLS provider. So that design comes with problems. Firstly, um, it can be difficult to manage. Making quality of service changes um, or prioritizing certain business critical applications um, can be difficult. It's very rare that you're given a management tool, um, a portal or a management tool that IT can have access to and change configurations themselves. Um, Normally you're asked to fire a request into a centrally managed desk on behalf of the MPLS provider and you're completely reliant on their speed of response to issue changes which can make delivering acceptable levels of customer service to your end users very difficult. Next is you get very little visibility out of the box from the um, MPLS provider of the traffic that's traversing your network. And therefore, when you get reports of slow speeds or poor connections, it's very difficult for IT to troubleshoot exactly what's going on. Next, as I said, as as individual sites come on board at different times, it can be contractually difficult to manage having a single coterminous start and end point of an agreement, which means that for many years, organisations tend to stay with a single MPLS provider simply because it's so difficult to leave. Okay, so that's, that's the backdrop, and against that backdrop, this is what we're hearing. So many of the IT managers that we, we've dealt with over a period of time where we've delivered MPLSs, this is, this is what they're telling us on a daily basis. I need a secure way of connecting into my off-site infrastructure, so my data center, and cloud-based applications, which increasingly may be hosted out of Azure or Amazon Web Services. Um, I need to prioritize voice, video, and business-critical applications, It's happening all the time that users are um, across social media and web streaming tools are consuming more and more bandwidth that can act as a detriment to business critical traffic. IT simply and particularly those IT teams who operate with a centralised IT team servicing local sites, they need a single central view of what's going on across the network and to be able to troubleshoot from a single portal what's going on without the need to validate, look at multiple different tools over a period of time and resource training on multiple different technologies. New sites need to be onboarded quickly and securely. Now, if you're at the hands of an MPLS provider, it can often be difficult for them to commission a MPLS tail quickly and easily, particularly if if you operate in the Ethernet world. Obviously, with Ethernet services, sometimes you're at the hands of, you can be at the hands of landlords for way leaves and consent to dig and provide access to buildings to deliver services quickly and that can often determine the lead times that you can um, effectively bring that site on net for want of a better word. Far simpler is to broker a, an internet service and, and use as, as Dan will show you in more detail and I'll, I'll touch on in a moment 
broker an internet service quickly while a more a permanent service is commissioned and you'll be able to bring that, that site online within, within weeks rather than months. I'm reviewing my WAN and, and internet provision and, and want to reduce my bandwidth costs. As I said, you need to put yourselves in the best possible place to broker the best commercial offering for your organization. Um, the time frames to commission are unre unrealistic. And then people simply want a reliable solution, a reliable um, way of networking sites together and to be able to manage it themselves quickly and easily. All of which sounds, sounds fair, reasonable and should be deliverable on. So I'll just talk about each of those in a bit more detail, start to show some images from, from Meraki and then Dan will hand over as to, as to how, how Meraki will meet those challenges. Okay, so software defined WAN, it's a big buzzword that's, that's passing the um, industry at the moment, but effectively it's a way of securing individually procured internet circuits overlaying with management control devices, in this case Meraki, um, which allow you to shape and control traffic out of one or multiple locations through those appliances, but all managed through the cloud. It, it provides access to a host of management control features, including um, the ability to set routing decisions based on predefined criteria. For example, if you have a, a primary pipe and a failover pipe at an individual location, um, your device can be set to permanent, permanently monitor the performance of your primary pipe and in the event that jitter or, jitter or packet loss um, passes a predefined um, performance criteria then traffic can all automatically be rerouted over a second route with no disruption in service. Um, as an alternative for if you have um, two pipes of similar capacity at a single location um, you can set rules to load balance traffic across two pipes one, to make sure that you never max out on the bandwidth that's available over the primary service. And two, to make sure that both services are effectively controlled. Um, next, um, you're able to automatically set and control secure VPN tunnels um, between sites or into the cloud-based applications, so possibly Azure or Amazon Web Services. So that's great if you're opening um, satellite sites um, quickly. Um, that need bandwidth quickly, but you need to secure traffic back into a centralized location. VPNs can be automatically assigned and managed through the cloud, and I'm sure Dan will, will touch on that in a moment. Um, next, you're able to set traffic policies such as quality of service. So voice or video is prioritized over other non-priority non applications. And then also you're able to control the amount of bandwidth that consumed by non-business critical applications quickly and easily. So that may mean social media or streaming sites where um, you only want to portion off a, a, a portion of the bandwidth, the total bandwidth that's available on your site to prevent them saturating your links. Um, next, the other significant thing via the um, clever routing within the SD-WAN appliances, in this case Meraki, um, is that um, you eliminate the need for third-party firewalling. Um, so Whereas traditionally you may have a, uh, within your MPLS or each of your internet breakout sites, a third party firewall controlling your traffic out to the internet. Through the single appliance that acts both as the router and also as, a, as the security appliance, and Dan will show you in a bit more detail, you can both route the traffic and also secure traffic out to the internet and block threats coming into your organization through a single appliance and manage it through the cloud-based dashboard, which is obviously significant where you're looking to simplify the management control. And then lastly, you're able to troubleshoot issues through the cloud, um, right down to application or client level across your network, across multiple sites from a central central place. So for any IT teams who are charged with delivering service to end users um, who are based remotely, um, it's a fantastic aid to help to help troubleshoot and diagnose issues faster and deliver on your internal SLAs. Okay, so the whole the whole value. So where does it cost in? Firstly, is um, you're able to broker lower cost internet, so you can either get more bandwidth for your buck, or you can make sure that you're paying the market rate for the bandwidth that you're consuming. Um, you're able to manage and control applications yourselves, or with assistance from people like yourselves, uh, like ourselves, so that you can control. The, so basically, the right applications are consuming the bandwidth that you have reserved. And then because it's managed and configured from the cloud, you get that centralized visibility and control 
um, and able to manage the appliances remotely without the need for on-site IT service technicians or you can only or you can focus the IT on-site service technicians only in needs where there clearly is an issue okay so Dan's going to show the um, show the dashboard in a bit more detail in a second but this is just an example of um, how through the cloud jitter latency and packet loss is monitored in real time and then through these criteria where you're managing in real time you can then set failover rules or traffic routing rules based on those predefined criteria um, and Dan, Dan will talk a bit more in a, in a second. Okay, for, for anybody who's looking to prioritize video and, and, and business critical applications, the first thing is the visibility that the, the, the dashboard will provide. So the dashboard will allow you to view what, ap what applications are actually consuming the bandwidth that you have available. And from here you can set polic differing policies based on a hierarchy so the right applications are given the right quality and the right priority of service and then the non-critical applications such as on this list iTunes or Spotify or whatever um, the amount of bandwidth that they consume is controlled so therefore you never find yourselves in situations where the wrong applications are saturating your bandwidth and causing performance issues for those people that are looking to focus on on business as usual operations okay in terms of failover the, fa the failover works um, can work across either um, an internet facing broadband and an MPLS tail. It could work across a broadband connection for a small satellite site and a 4G with it that, that was set to automatically fail over to a 4G router or between for example an FTTC broadband and an ADSL which is used as backup. Plus then from that, from that appliance and Dan will show you in a second that's managing the failover, secure VPN can then be programmed into either Amazon Web Services or Azure so if you are looking to consume or beginning to consume cloud-based services out of something like one of those tools you know that any tra traffic you're routing into those into those sites or into those into those areas is secured down by secure VPN without the need to invest in an interconnect from your MPLS provider okay blocking and controlling certain applications so once you have that granular visibility on who's consuming what what application you can then through the management portal simply um, block um, individual applications you can either block groups of applications or, or go right down to specific sites and then block either certain groups of users or do a blanket block um, blocking users consume them to, to prevent the bandwidth saturation that we spoke about earlier and as I said as I said before um, secure VPNs into Amazon Web Services or Azure are absolutely available for so for anybody looking to send backup replication traffic or consume services that they host out of one of those one of those tools then that's absolutely available and can, can be configured with uh, with no issue at all Okay, so the, so the traditional network versus SD1. So um, MPLS is a whole MPLS traditionally is slower to deploy. Adding a new site onto an MPLS can be cumbersome. So what you could do is if you're looking to um, connect a new site in is simply broker a, an, an individual internet connection and secure the link back into the MPLS in the meantime while you look to, to provision an, um, a new MPLS tail. In terms of cost, because you're no longer tied to the network provider that's delivering your MPLS, you're able to broker much better bang for your buck in terms of internet internet connection and either get more bandwidth for the same cost or, or bank the cost saving to use in other areas across IT. In terms of scalability, it's easy to repeat and deploy. And in terms of management, in terms of granularity of visibility and also in terms of ease of, ease of management, as you're about to see now as I hand over to Dan, the actual management control that you're given through the dashboard, which is the really exciting piece, is far, far outweighs what you get through a traditional MPLS.